Uh, we've invited uh, Jeff Phillips and uh, his uh, team and Doug Bico uh, from Bico Phillips Engineering. They were um, engaged by the board many years ago uh, to take a look at uh, the current high school site. And uh, they have been very helpful in, in assisting the administration board to make some determinations around the current site and ask them to speak to uh, these issues. I and think yes, we can have them use the Jeff's microphone. We want to make sure that it's picked up on the on the video. I mean, you can pull that out of it. Also, Heidi, can you just mention about all the presentations, and we'll say comment questions, comments to you. Sure, I'll do that. That's better. We're going to finish with um, with all of the presentations, and then we will um, uh, go back to the board. And if anyone has comments or questions from the audience, and they can address the board, and then the board can defer to any of us. Right? All right. Thank you. Uh, as Dr. Andecker said, now my name is Jeff Phillips. I'm with uh, Phillips and Associates. Uh, do uh, some land development. Uh, basically, we do all the work that's outside all facilities, buildings, the architect is five foot and in. Uh, what it is, is as you know, Western Pennsylvania is not flat, and where it has been built has already been developed. We looked at the uh, current high school facility, which uh, was mentioned as 14 acres. That includes the football stadium and all the minimal parking lot and the old school. 70% of that 14 acres is in the 100 year floodplain of the Ohio River. That means that down where the football stadium is, water at a 100 year event will pond up seven to eight feet above the field. So in order to put any type of facility there, we would have to fill that in seven to eight feet to bring it up high enough that it would not, flip, would not flood a new high school. To, in order to do that, we would have to do an extensive amount of permitting to, with the state and the federal government because we are impacting the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers floodway, which uh, is the Ohio River. As far as a footprint of a building to put in that area, uh, previous studies have determined that the end of the next 100 years needs to be in the neighborhood of 100 to 200,000, 180 to 200,000 square feet. That's larger than what your football field is. So you also, with the high school, as, as was mentioned, you need ADA access, you need sidewalks, uh, parking, uh, bus drop-off facilities. So to meet all the future needs that this district needs for just the the footprint of the building, you're looking at almost 15 to 20 acres of flat area. You've only got 14 and you've only got nine that's in that we can make level. To bring it up to grade, the cost, even if the Army Corps of Engineers would allow you to do it because we cannot displace the volume of water that currently would fill that area onto other residents in the area. So we'd have to build a lot of retaining walls. We'd also have to bring in about 125,000 yards of material. So we're talking about a lot of costs. Not only the permitting, there's no guarantee we would get approval by the Army Corps of Engineers as well as the DET. In regards to other geologic conditions, I'll let Doug speak to those. He's a geotechnical engineer with Barbara Barbie. Yes, as, as Jeff said, my name is Doug, Doug Biko. I'm a geotechnical engineer. For those in the audience that don't really know what that is, um, geotechnical engineers evaluate the soil and bedrock at a given site relative to plan construction. A new building, a new bridge, roads, uh, retaining walls. Um, we look at landslides and landslide repair. It's a normal part of what we do. Um, in addition to the challenges that, that, that Jeff brought out, there are some geotechnical challenges that we have to deal with here. Um, you know, the, the, the main building and the additions that were, that were put on it in the, in the 90s 
are supported on deep foundations, um, which basically are columns that extend down through questionable soil down to something that's more competent. Um, and just from probably hearing it, you, you realize there's a lot of money that's put into deep foundations. Um, that's really, it's not really appreciated. It's appreciated by me, <laughs> but it's not really appreciated by anybody else because it doesn't add, doesn't add to the educational value. It's all buried. Um, so there are some geotechnical considerations that we have at the existing building. Also, um, if we were to put a new school down in the flat area where the football field is, there are geotechnical considerations there. Uh, I don't I don't know the numbers, but I know um, the soil the poor soils extend to great depths. That and, and it cost an awful lot of money to build that field relative to what it would have been had it been on firm, good soil. So, you know, again, I appreciate that kind of that, that kind of thing, but you know, nobody else does. The 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 people playing on the field, they don't. They don't realize all the money that's underneath, and and kind of and kind of thrown down the, uh, the the drain per se. So, you know that's 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 another issue. If the core ended up did give permission, we're going to be spending a lot of money that's unseen and unappreciated. Um, so, that's that, that's kind of my summary. The last bullet you see there is relocation of the students. We would also, to build a new high school, be taking down the old high school. And you're looking at a construction period of the whole 14 acres of somewhere in the neighborhood of two to three years. So you're looking at having to relocate all of those students that use those facilities, use all of the sports facilities, let alone the educational part of it, to somewhere else in the district. So you're making a big disruption to the good education that Quaker Valley is here to give to the students that are here for the future. So our advice after going through all those different things was that the amount of money for the current property and the current building, may it be a historic, almost 100 years old, will not take, there's not enough room or the amount of money you have to put in just to bring the site up to a redevelopment of a new school far exceeds possibly getting another piece of property in the district and being able to put all of your campus facilities, <coughs> the sports, but all the other future needs that the district might have. So that was our final recommendation to the board was the amount of money they have to put in for the existing facility and as you've heard earlier with the budget finance, money's very, very tight for the future. You're putting a lot of money underground, is what you're doing at the current site. Thank you very much. I should mention uh, just uh, one final comment is that this team made an extensive presentation with PowerPoint. Uh, when, Jeff, last fall? September. Last September. September. To the board. Uh, and, and in a public meeting where this, uh, this was all laid out. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.